our lectures on blotting techniques in which we had already discussed southern blotting and today we will be taking northern blotting. Hi, I am Dr. Deepika Jalania Tomar, welcomes you at Zulofite. Now, without much ado, let's start the topic of the day. Northern blotting is discovered by Alvin Jens Northern blotting is basically a variant of southern blotting only and due to its similarity with southern blotting it is named as northern blotting along with northern blotting it is also called as RNA blot There exist a very fine differences between the two techniques that is southern and northern blotting and we will be listing those differences along with the protocol only. So first of all the northern blotting here is used to detect RNA in the sample of mixtures of RNAs. This is difference one. See, in southern blotting, we use DNA as a sample and in northern blotting, we are using RNA as a sample. This is difference one. And ongoing the protocol of northern blotting, same as that of southern blotting, first of all, we need to separate RNA RNA according to their differences in size of fragment via gel electrophoresis. Now we already know that in electrophoresis we use two types of gel. One is across gel and another one is poly acrylamide gel. Also called as PAA gel. In gel electrophoresis here, along with agrose gel, or if we are using agrose gel, then we use this along with denaturating agent. So the question here arises is: in southern blotting, DNA is double stranded. So in this step of denaturation there, we need to convert double-stranded DNA into single-stranded DNA. But here in northern blotting, where we are taking RNA as a sample, we already know that RNA is already single strand. So what is the need of doing denaturation over here? Here, using denaturating agent, we ensure the linear conformation of RNA on a gel or to prevent the inter or intramolecular base pairing among the RNA fragments. This is the main purpose of using denaturating agent over here. Here, basically we use formaldehyde and dimethyl sulfoxide which is also called as DMSO as denaturating agent to ensure to ensure the linear conformation of RNA fragments or to prevent Inter and intramolecular base pairing. And this is the second difference between the two techniques. Southern and Northern blocking. 
This happens when we use a gross as a gel and when we are taking PAA as a gel, then we use it along with urea as in denaturating agent. After gel electrophoresis, the next step is blotting. And here in blotting, we use either a nylon membrane or dialazobenzyloxymethyl, which is also called as DBM paper or diazophenylthioether which is also called as DBT paper. In southern blotting, we use nylon membrane or a nitrocellulose membrane as a blotting membrane but here we don't use nitrocellulose membrane because RNA doesn't, doesn't bind firmly to it but instead of that we use nylon membrane or DBM paper or a DBT paper. Fine. Here this is the third difference that we don't use nitrocellulose membrane over here and instead of that we use either these two papers along with it. As discussed earlier transfer buffer is used in blotting process for the transfer of fragments of DNA or RNA from electrophoresis membrane to a blotting membrane. And here, in northern blotting, during blotting, the transfer buffer used is formamide. This is the transfer buffer which is used here in blotting because it lowers the temperature of annealing of prop and RNA sample which eliminates the need of high temperature because high temperature degrades RNA. This is the fourth difference. As you remember, during hybridization in southern blotting, we had discussed a special condition which is a condition of high temperature and low ionic strength was needed for the perfect hybridization of prop and a DNA sample. But here, high temperature degrades the RNA. So, we can't maintain a high temperature over here. For this, we use formamide as a buffer which lowers the unhealing temperature of prob and RNA and this eliminates the need of high temperature which basically result in the degradation of RNA. So this is the fourth difference. Next step after blotting is hybridization as we know. Here we use either a single strand DNA or RNA having complementary base sequence to RNA sample as a prop. Here the prop we use either it has to be labeled with radioactive element labeled with radioisotope which is usually P32 or either a probe is labeled with chemiluminescent researchers 
favor chameleuminescent over radio isotopes because its faster signals second its more sensitivity it's more sensitive and third it's reduced health hazards as compared to radio isotope labeling next step is fixation fixation is basically done either baking a membrane at 70 degrees celsius for one hour or treating it with uv radiation for 5 minutes at 254 nanometers and and the fixation is basically done for permanent immobilization of rna fragment on a clotting membrane and the last step after fixation is analysis by a photoradiography and to know the process of photoradiography refer to our previous videos now let's discuss the uses of northern blotting first of all it is used to measure measure the amount and size of rna transcribed by a gene by g next it is used to study gene expression or rna expression of a particular gene by which we can monitor a cellular control by which we can monitor developmental stages environmental stress level and in pathogenic infections also used to study over regulation of oncogenes and down regulation tumor suppressor genes cells when compared to normal cells and the last northern blotting is also used to study gene expression rejection of transplanted organs now advantages and disadvantages of northern blotting here along with northern blotting RT PCR RNA protection assay microarrays serial and 
analysis of RNA expression. Also called as SAGE. These techniques are also used along with uh, northern plotting to study the expression of a gene in which microarray is commonly used. So the advantage of northern plotting over uh, microarray is that northern plotting can detect this small change in a gene. in a sample which a microarray cannot but this is advantage this is advantage of northern blotting but microarray can use thousand of RNA sample to detect in a one go Whereas, northern plotting can detect only one or small number of RNA sample. This is the disadvantage of northern plotting. And when we compare RT-PCR with northern plotting, Northern plotting has low sensitivity, but it has high specificity. And due to this, it reduces the chances of false positive results. as compared to RT-PCR. So, this is an advantage of northern plotting over RT-PCR and this is its disadvantage. Third disadvantage of northern plotting is it's a disadvantage. Here, RNA sample in northern blotting is often degraded often degraded which can be prevented either by sterilizing glassware properly or by treating RNAs treating by a RNAs inhibitor which is diethyl pyrocarbonate also called as DEPC. Next disadvantage is chemicals used in northern plotting is that is DEPC formaldehyde UV radiations these are harmful for researchers The main question arises here is why blotting step is required in nucleic acid hybridization or we can say that why we need to transfer sample from electroporitic gel to blotting membrane. This is electro 
Hydrophoretic gel is fragile in which a probe can't move. So we need to transfer sample to blotting membrane. so that a perfect hybridization can occur. Hybridization between sample and prop occur. That's all for northern blotting and in the next blotting we will be discussing western blotting. Till then, thank you.